Bum, 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 Bum bottom, bum bottom, down, da 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 dun da dun da dun da dun da Oh my! Hello! Hello, my friends! Oh my goodness! I'm still trying to get this settled with Facebook. Oh, for goodness sakes, I, you know, I, I'm no good at this technology garbage. I just, I can't. Hello, my friends! Show what Calibri's here. For those of you who don't know me, we, all of you and I are all together every Monday at eight o'clock Eastern time. And we do one thing and one thing only. It's homeopathy. It's all about homeopathy. And I'm so glad you're here. I see my friends here. It's so great. And for those of you who don't know, do know me. I know. Look what happened. Those of you who do, who do I know? I know I am on the wrong page. We're going back to, oh, here it is. There we go. Yes. Thank goodness. No, see this. Yeah. X out again. I will X out again. Yes, 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 yes. Here we are. Oh, my goodness. For goodness. Yeah, there's your arm, Perry. <laughs> we see bits and pieces of Perry. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know me, that's what we do. For those of you who do know me, wonderful to see you all. It's all my old friends. It's so wonderful. Harry, Leanne, Junette. It's just so nice. I love to see all of you. It's great. Hello from Wisconsin. Sitting on my hands, Barbara. Hello from Southern California. Hello, Grand Rapids area, Texas. It's wonderful. Here we go. Let's see. Hi, hi. Lots of hearts from on Facebook. Thank you very much. Hi, Bob and Deb. Nice to see you. Hello from Tennessee. It's great to see everyone. I love you all. It's wonderful. So today is kind of um, it's kind of uh, an odd day for me today. It was um, I we, uh, Perry and I went for a long walk this morning, and it was hot, hot, hot. Ninety one, I think it was here in Florida. And um, I failed to drink water. And instead, I foolishly had a cup of coffee this morning. And then I didn't drink water. And then our air conditioner failed. Oh, yes. And I got really dehydrated today. And so I'm still kind of a little spacey. I haven't come back quite yet. I'm not all there. So if I'm not on top of my game, you'll maybe forgive me. <laughs> You know, as strange as is that I tell you my deepest thoughts. I mean, some of you, I don't even know how sick is this. I read on myself all the time with you guys. I tell you about <laughs> this illness and that illness. Sometimes, apparently, I feel compelled to tell the internet about all of my troubles for crying out loud. I do. Do I have no shame for goodness sakes? Sometimes my family learns about how I'm feeling from watching me on, on these sites, you know, I don't know, maybe I have courage or something, not worried about somebody coming after me on the internet, you know, but you know, you know who has real courage are the saints. And, and I, trust me, I'm no saint. <laughs> I look up to them, but I got to say, I think they have better connections than I have. I, I, I'm just not as tight as I should be with him. <clears throat> but um, you know, I'm just going to drink, excuse me, this is what I have to do. I'm going to drink my water, but this is not just any old water. I want to tell you what I did. Okay. First, I put salt in it. 
I yes, I keep salt in a in a in a little plate in the kitchen. So I, I put salt, I'll put a little bit more because I don't really taste it. But I also then put some electrolytes in because I was super dehydrated. This is not homeopathic, my friends. I'm just telling you electrolyte drops and it's called keto chow. Um, and I put the, the uh, how much you're supposed to put in there uh, because <laughs> one time I did not follow the directions in using electrolytes and Perry and I were really sick. I mean, I thought you're supposed to taste it and I didn't measure and I just went ahead. So anyway, so here's my pitcher of water in which I have my electrolytes and I also put in some bioplasma and I also put in some grapefruit, not this one, but another grapefruit. <clears throat> and I also put in a little bit of yogurt and whey um, because I felt as though I needed I needed all the help I could get today. It was kind of crazy <clears> that I felt so spacey. It was really very strange feeling. I don't like that feeling. It feels like everything's going wrong. I don't know if you get that. Um, so yeah, I put the <clears throat> bioplasma in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. You see, even I'm not even talking properly. So goofy. Now, I have been, I'm feeling a little better. I'm getting my energy back. But it was more than loss of energy. I really felt like not not on my game at all. Like I was kind of aimlessly doing things today. I forgot where I was going, you know, in my book. <clears throat> but I'll show you what I did look up. I actually I don't have to look this up. I'm going to tell you that there's one absolutely gobsmacking homeopathic medicine for dehydration. Now I did not take it. <clears throat> Excuse me again. I did not take it. And I'll tell you why in a moment, but I'm going to show it to you. Um, and I used Robin Murphy's repertory because I want you to see if you didn't know this medicine, you would know at least how to look it up. Okay. So in, this is the fourth edition of Robin Murphy's repertory. And I looked under the clinical section and then dehydration. Am I holding this properly? Is that dehydration? I don't know. Is that dehydration? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Dehydration right here. Well, the most important remedy there is, let's see, I can see it on my other screen, <clears throat> is China. I mean, there are others too. There's kelp foss, there's veratrum album, but look at China, C-H-I-N. Oh, for goodness sakes, isn't this terrible? See China? You can see all those other remedies. China. I love China. Uh, China 200. Some people pronounce it Kina, but I mean, let's not be esoteric, okay? I used to actually pronounce it that way because that's the way I learned it in my homeopathy classes. But I decided we're going to throw out the esoteric and we're going to be go as, as simple as we possibly can with this homeopathy. You know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a man of my word. No, I guess I'm more like a, an old lady of my word. <laughs> and my focus, my goal is to get this out to everyone. This should not be in the hands of just those who consider themselves the pillars of homeopathy. <laughs> this needs to go to mothers, grandmothers, fathers, grandfathers, and those who take um, care of livestock and animals, and wildlife, uh, pets. So yes, China, I could have taken China, and I would have taken it probably in a 200. But it's not like I got very sick. And I would rather if, and, and this is what I want you to understand about why I chose not to take the homeopathic, well, except for the bioplasma. And instead, I wanted to take the you know, the keto drops, the electro, uh, the uh, uh, um, electrolyte drops and the grapefruit juice and the little bit of salt and the little bit of yogurt. I want it, I want to be able to use common sense things and, um, and save homeopathy <clears throat> for when we need it as a medicine. I, I didn't need it. And so I knew that I wouldn't need it. I knew that if I started to drink water with all of those little things in them, all those additives in it, that I would be just fine. It would just take a little while. 
and I am. I am kind of, I feel, I feel fine. I'm coming around. I'm not as on top of my game as I ought to be, but I, I'm, I'm nearly there. So I thought that today, um, Italian old women can cure everything, <laughs> says Francine. Just saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Gave it to my Lassapu this past week for diarrhea. Yeah, it's a good one for diarrhea. Now, look, I also want to point this out to you, too. Because for diarrhea, I'm going to go back to dehydration. I hope I can hold this book up properly for good because everything's backwards for me. Right there. Okay. There's the dehydration. I'm going to bring it up a little bit closer. Now, there's only two rem remedies that are underlined. China up there and Veratrum Album right there. You see that Veratrum? Well, Veratrum Album is an excellent medicine for dehydration that also presents with diarrhea or it's dehydration from diarrhea but it's associated so should there be i'm glad that that you had some good use out of china but if we can be even more specific such as using veratrum album um along with um i'm looking up here for a second yeah along with uh, uh, a good amount of water a little bit of salt um, then, then we're going to be in good stead. Now, what potency would I use Veratrum Albumin? I would use 200. Yes, I would. And if it's if the the dog is not feeling so well and really sick, I would stay with 200, but I would use it a little more frequently. Normally, I'd use it maybe twice or three times in a day if it were a, an acute situation. And the next day, I would assume things are going to be better, and then we back off from three times a day and go back to twice a day. Um, and then, uh, coconut water <clears throat> for electro. Absolutely. Yes. Coconut water would be, would have been a very good thing to add to this water. You're absolutely right. And I've got canned coconut water. Um, uh, but I also have raw, um, uh, yogurt, which I adore. And so I put some of that in there. I'm deliriously happy. Love my, I think you're very sweet. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Let's see if we have any other questions here. And then I'm going to just answer questions tonight. Um, let's see. It's going so quickly. I'm sorry. It flips up and I'm trying to keep, try to stop it. Um, okay. Have you ever heard of hives happening because of gut issues? Oh, my. Hives can happen with just about anything. It's amazing how hives... I had a case years ago, it's the first time I saw this, where it was a young man um, in his 20s and he had just gotten news on the phone from his parents that his sister had cancer and she only had a short amount of time to live. And within minutes, um, he got hives. And then someone just sent me a case the other day, someone who had got bad news as a result, uh, as a result, they got hives, yes. Yeah, kombucha. Yes, you bet. I've got kombucha in the refrigerator. You're absolutely right. Kombucha would have been good too. Um, oh, and then we're asked, how is Joe Pathy doing? Oh, love that Joe Pathy. He's doing well. He's doing very well. I think I may have shared with you that um, we are working with him to help him with his site. And we're going to, when he is ready, he, when he retires, then I will be um, taking over the site, for which I'm very excited because Joe Pathy does everything and has been doing ever, all of his work gratis. Um, also, we're working with Rinku Banerjee. I think I've said this before. She is Dr. Pratip Banerjee's widow. And we're working with her and we're hoping to help them and make the connection between the U.S. and she's opening and she has opened a new clinic. It's the Pratip Banerjee, Banerjee Memorial uh, Clinic. And um, it's going to be a little different than the Prasanta Banerjee Homeopathic Research Foundation. And so we're, uh, Perry's doing a lot of her IT work for her and it's going to be wonderful. We are working on a global level, my friends. I don't know that if you know, but this is, this movement is, uh, this is political. 
I don't know if you know that. If you buy from a local family farm, that's a political act. If you give birth to your child at home, that's a political act. If you decide to take care of your family yourself for health care conditions, that is a political act. And so you know what that requires? It requires gut spunk and moxie, but also courage. And so I want you to remember that. It's very important. We have to be courageous. We don't want to back down from this. We don't want to be too much in the face of the adversaries, but we do want to have courage. Because when the time comes, the answer to globalism is localism. You are so right, Leanne. Leanne, my dear, my friend, <laughs> you are always right. <laughs> Thinking for yourself is a political act. You bet. You know, on our deathbed, we're not going to remember the trivial things in life, obviously. We're going to think of our loved ones. We're going to think of our relationship to him. We're going to think about whether or not we did the right thing. We want to make that is the goal. And at times it's going to get a little scary. And I think it is going to be a little scary for a while. But I think I think we're going to be OK. Um, yeah, Joe, I never thought of having my child at home 21 years ago as a political act. Just wanted to have a beautiful experience without any type of intervention. Yes, but they want to intervene. That's the problem. They don't like when people break from the, 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 the norm. <laughs> what is, okay, my son asked, what is moxie? It's a Yiddish word. It's a cool word. It's having guts. It's it's more it's more interesting when you say it, Moxie. It's a little more colloquial. Okay, let's see what folks are saying in my um, in Facebook. Homeschooling mom, political. How dare you? How did you know? It's interesting because when I was homeschooling our kids, I had a cousin. Still have her as a cousin, who was a teacher. And this was, I don't know. 23 years ago, I mentioned it to her and, and, and very uh, naively, I said I was excited about my decision to do this. And I wanted to share with her because she's a teacher and she did not like it. She said, you're going to ruin the educational system if mothers take over and do that kind of thing. I said, I actually think I'm going to do good for the education system because they need a little you know, moving along here. I don't know if anyone has ever followed Charlotte Iserby. Check her out, friends. Charlotte Iserby. It's spelled I-S-B-E-R-Y-T, maybe. She's on YouTube, or if she's not, then she's on the Alternatives Rumble and that kind of thing. And she was a mom in New England. She's quite elderly now. I might guess that she's in her 80s, um, who got involved in the um, school board and then went further and worked for the Department of Education um, and oh, the Department of Education. Okay. So anyway, and she, um, she learned some really interesting things that were coming through the Department of Education. And this was back in, I'm going to say it was maybe the seventies. Yes. China also good for long-term extreme fatigue. Yes, thank you for saying that, Tammy. China 200 is for fatigue, but fatigue is often related to dehydration too. So look how we're pulling this all together. Um, yeah, public school teacher here says, Melissa, my children go to Catholic schools. It's the way it works. Public schools are not like they used to be. I loved school. Did you not love school if you're my vintage? I mean, I went to school in the 50s, 60s, 70s. I loved it. I loved my teachers. My parents liked my teachers. We learned. They pushed us. They made us work hard. They, they, um, my favorite teacher was Miss Olivieri, and we had her for sixth, fifth grade and sixth grade. She moved up with us. Oh, my gosh. She was like a 
member of the family. Loved, loved, loved her. We all loved school. It was really great back then. Buffalo had good public schools back then. It's not the same, is it? But that's okay. It's all right. We've got ourselves. We can train them up. Um, Jill, our third grade, third year as well, so grateful for the ability to do this for so many reasons, spending a lot of time teaching real American history. You bet. You absolutely bet. Okay, let's let's go with some homeopathy questions, okay? Um, yeah, homeschools. Yep. Lots and lots of homeschool. <gasps> Charlotte Iserby passed away this spring? Oh, she was a dynamic force. I-S-B-E-R-Y-T, I think is the way it's spelled. Charlotte, she was a dynamo. Mm, mm, you bet. Thank you for your talk on Orm Metallicum last week. My husband was distraught with back pain, crying uncontrollably. Have him um, have him take Orm. Oh, it went along. It moves, it moves along so quickly. You bet. Let's see what else we've got. There is no particular topic tonight, and I'll tell you why. Because I was too spacey. I had an idea, and I'm going to push it along till next week. The topic next week is going to be about primate pustules. So if you're craving bananas, you know, and you have this desire to swing from vines, we're going to be talking about that next week. Absolutely. Yep. Question, when using a remedy for a specific condition, can I count on it to address the other conditions that helped me choose the remedy in the first place? For example, hyoscyamus for memory and rage, but will it treat the paralyzed bladder and slightly enlarged prostate? Mm, well, give it a try, but more likely you're going to have to choose another remedy or two. Um... What is good for all body, all for all body itch, no rash, ongoing since childhood. I talk about that. That is, I think I talk about that on my blog, and um, and certainly in my course called titled Skin, the um, the the uh, ugly truth. But um, there are some wonderful remedies for itching, and it doesn't have to be a rash. So um, you might find that the check out my blog. Check out my blog. Um, all right. Concussion help, my blog. Listen, folks, this is what I want you to do. When you don't know what medicine to use, you do this. Joe at Calabrese, concussion. Joe at Calabrese, head injury. Joe at Calabrese, OCD. Joe at Calabrese, menopause. And you might find it on the blog, but you might also find it in articles that I've written for other sites, such as Weston Price's um, uh, Rest of Price's journal titled, oh, don't you hate when this happens? Um, Traditions, nurse, I've forgotten. People are going to tell me in a second. It was a great journal. It's a great journal. Yes, and Orm is also great for chronic fatigue. You're absolutely right. What is it, honey? Wise, Wise traditions. So I wrote a, an, um, a column in that wise traditions journal through the Weston Price Foundation. I think it was something like nine, 10 years, something like that. So I wrote a lot of stuff. Okay. You bet. How do you take two protocols where one of the remedies is the same for both? You choose. What is the condition that is the most sobering? Whatever that condition is, you use that protocol, even though it might be a different potency for the secondary uh, condition, and watch and assume that that remedy will act in the other condition as well. You all, just because, I want to reiterate this, just because you know the medicine to use for a specific condition doesn't mean you use it. And that's what my story is tonight. I know that China, Officinalis 200C would likely have helped me tonight, but instead I chose to drink water with a little electrolytes and my grapefruit juice and my salt and some bioplasma <laughs> and a little bit of yogurt. 
Um, yes. Yep. How do you deal with with directing friends to remedies for sale at local storefronts when they don't sell the ideal potency? Um, well, instead, I mean, I don't know how to tell you how to, to keep people from doing that. Sometimes some, some of these remedies, the potencies are interchangeable, but if they're not or they're not seeing results, then it really is time to get the, the potency that is specific to the condition. Yeah, the deliberate dumbing down of American by Charlotte Iserby. Funny, my library system does not hold a copy. Doesn't surprise me. Does colloidal silver antidote homeopathy topically or orally following clean mouth? Um, I don't believe it does. I've never seen anything like that with colloidal silver. I type Joette Calabrese and the varied symptoms all the time. So thank, thankful for your free information. Thank you. Last year, by the grace of God, God I followed your plantar fasciitis protocol suggestions along with extended stretching with a couple of, um, trying to click on it to see more. Within a couple of weeks, I was in so much less pain. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. You are very welcome. And that's what I want you folks to do. I want you to get out there learn these medicines i love live on monday nights says barbara i want you to do this i want to spawn homeopaths all over the world i don't want homeopathy to be in the hands of only professional homeopaths which is why i eschew the classical format because the classical format of homeopathy, in my estimation, is intended to keep the everyday person out and to make it really sturdy for just the practitioners. Not cool. That, my friends, will be the demise of homeopathy. If we keep homeopathy esoteric, unique, unusual, new age, <laughs> it'll die it almost has died many times but this is breathing fresh air into this movement by teaching mothers and grandmothers and fathers and grandfathers and caretakers how to treat not just acutes but also chronic conditions because I can't tell you the number of years I taught homeopathy. I taught it in college. I taught it in people's homes and schools, in cloistered convents. I taught it in high schools. I taught it in so many different places. And every time I did that, I was trying to use the classical methodology, which is teach acutes and then people will use it just for acutes. But we're not loaded down with acutes. Not everyone gets a cold. Not everyone gets conjunctivitis or strep throat or otitis media. Or if they do, it's occasional. What most people have is a chronic condition. Like this, this person who just mentioned, itching since young, very early in life, without a rash, just itching. That's a chronic condition. Why should we not teach that? Why not? Okay, let's see what else we've got here. Yeah, no one owns the teachings. And as Robin Murphy said, I'm going to paraphrase, that we should not be a slave to the methodology. Instead, we owe it to humanity to do what's right, to get it out to as many people as possible. <laughs> well, if you haven't gone to my uh, blog today, um, if you're on my email list, you would have automatically gotten it. Do go on it because I've got a song that I think you might enjoy and it might, it's catchy. Um, and we're going to have it up on the site soon. But the, the problem is that we did this, <laughs> we put together the video section long enough ago that my oldest son was not engaged. And since then, he's been engaged and now married. And so my family is growing. I have a daughter-in-law and I want her in this video. So we're going to try to reconfigure it and include her. And by the time I get that included, maybe I'll have a grandchild. <laughs> All righty, my friends.
I just stepped on a bee and the pain was instantaneously and instant instantaneous and intense. Apis 200 took care of it. One dose. Then I woke two days later with voluptuous itching at the same site. Again, Apis 200 took care of it. You've got it, Lisa. Nice job. Love you all, my friends. God bless you. And I'll see you next Monday, same time. Bye.